Missy Misdemeanor Elliott has been in the music game for decades, snagging Grammy awards and dominating the charts with her infectious lyrics. When the pioneer artist wasn't harmonizing on her own tracks, seamlessly shifting between rapping and singing, she was writing and producing for her peers. From the start, it was clear Missy was a multifaceted star. But behind the glitz, glamour, and trendy outfits, she has faced some troubling times. From a troubled upbringing to a debilitating health condition and rumors about her personal preference, here's the sad truth about her life story. Melissa Elliott was born in 1971. As the daughter of a U.S. Marine, her family moved from Virginia to the coastal town of Jacksonville, North Carolina. Missy told The Guardian that while in Jacksonville, she and her parents lived in a mobile home community. Although they weren't necessarily living the good life, Missy told the publication, those were some of the happiest days of her childhood. She would spend her time performing Jackson 5 songs to passerbys, or would put on concerts inside her bedroom to an imaginary audience. While in school, Missy was the class clown who rarely focused on her studies. She told The Guardian she would change all of her F's to B's to fool her mom. She knew from the time she was in kindergarten that she wanted to be a musician. But when she would tell her classmates her dreams of becoming a superstar, she told Marie Claire magazine they would all laugh at her. When she was in second grade, she took an IQ test and received an extremely high score that revealed she was a genius. Her school thought they had made a mistake, so she took the test again, and guess what? She passed as a genius once again. According to Rolling Stone, she was bumped up two grades, which ticked Missy off. She told The Guardian, I didn't want to be a genius. That ain't cool. Isolated from her friends, she decided to flunk every class until they returned her back to her previous age group. But before that could happen, her dad quit the Marines, and their family packed up and moved back to Virginia. This is where her life took a devastating turn. Her dad was out of work, so the family of three was forced to live in a propane-heated shack. At night, her dad would stay up late, shooing away the mice that were running across Missy and her mom. Her mom told VH1's Behind the Music they didn't have any running water, and because they didn't have a bathroom, they used a pot next to their bed to relieve themselves. Missy thought that if only someone could recognize her music abilities, she would finally be able to escape her life of poverty. She told The Guardian she sent letters and tapes every day to some of her idols, including Michael and Janet Jackson, begging them to rescue her. Missy said they never wrote back. I cried every night about that. Her parents told her to give up on her dream of becoming a rapper and encouraged her to go to the army. However, Missy was afraid she would never be accepted into the military because of her weight. At the age of eight, her 16-year-old cousin began inviting her to his house after school. It was during that time when the unthinkable happened. Missy told Behind the Music that she was too young to understand what was going on. She said, but I knew something was wrong. Even though her dad finally found a job, things got increasingly worse at home when he began laying hands on Missy and her mom. Things got so bad, Missy said she would come home from school, lock herself in her room, and cry all night. She told author Beverly Bond, when her mom cried, she would cry as well. She added, it would hurt me because she was always everything to me. Every day, she would beg her mom to leave him. And shortly after Missy's 14th birthday, her mom finally found the strength to walk away. Her mom told her to pack her things in a box and go to the school bus stop as normal. After her dad drove past on his way to work, Missy's mom picked her up from the bus stop and brought her back home. Missy saw a U-Haul truck outside their home, and her aunts, uncles, and cousins were loading it up with all their belongings. Missy told The Guardian they left her dad with just a fork, a spoon, and a blanket. She was terrified that he would find them, and she lived in fear for a long time. Surprisingly, he never tried to track them down. Missy later told The Guardian that as an adult, she would speak to him sometimes and helped him when he needed it, but she could never forgive him for how he treated her mother. Missy and her mom struggled for many years, but music was her form of escape. She eventually formed a group called Sista with her friends and her songwriting partner, Timothy Timberland Mosley. 
They were discovered by Devante Swing of Jodeci, and he invited them to New York to record an album. They headed to the Big Apple, and that's when Missy found out the cold, hard truth about the music industry. She told The Guardian that music executives told her she was, quote, too tubby to be a singer. Missy admitted she was heartbroken. She said, they said I could sing, I could write, but that I looked wrong. With no other options, she decided to perfect her skills as a songwriter. She and Timberland began selling their songs to other artists and finally landed their big break when they were asked to produce tracks for Aaliyah's 1996 album, One in a Million. According to VH1's Behind the Music, Missy, Aaliyah, and Timbaland became inseparable from the first day they met. Missy and Timbaland were on top of the world. Their combination of catchy lyrics and unique beats allowed their songs to dominate everything, from the radio to music countdowns to award shows. With her success as a songwriter and producer, Missy finally got the opportunity to release her own music. In 1997, her debut album, Super Dupa Fly, which was produced entirely by Timbaland, brought a futuristic vibe to the music world. It sold 1.2 million copies and was certified platinum thanks to songs like The Rain and Sock It To Me. Missy followed up that album by releasing The Real World in 1999 and Miss E So Addictive in 2001. With the money pouring in, Missy didn't spend her first check on herself. Ever since she was a little girl, she would tell her mom, I'm going to buy you a house and I'm going to buy you an elevator in case your legs start hurting. Missy told Marie Claire her mom would just laugh at her wild dream. But in 2001, Missy held true to her promise by buying a piece of land and building her mom a five-bedroom, seven-bath, 14,000-square-foot mansion in Virginia Beach. According to Redfin, the home has a gym, indoor swimming pool, a home theater, and, you guessed it, an elevator for her beloved mom. With her mom taken care of, Missy finally decided to spoil herself by buying a 4,400 square foot condo in Florida. According to Variety, Missy paid $1.3 million for the 19th floor condo with views overlooking the ocean. Being in the spotlight as one of the hottest artists also brought her a lot of negative attention. The media became fixated on her love life, and gossip magazines speculated she was in a relationship with everyone, from Eva Marcel to Carrie Hilson. The very private entertainer has consistently refrained from speaking about her love life. However, in 2008, she told People magazine she wanted to have kids but would probably adopt to avoid going through the pain of childbirth. She added, maybe in the year 2020, you could just pop a baby out and it'd be fine. But right now, I'd rather just adopt. With all of her awards, accolades, and with the public's interest in her private life, Missy was a bona fide star. Then she suddenly disappeared, and no one knew what happened. She revealed that in 2008, she was diagnosed with Graves' disease, an incurable autoimmune disorder. She told People magazine she underwent radiation and was prescribed medication to deal with the symptoms, which ranged from dizzy spells to hair loss, muscle weakness, a fast heart rate, and bulging eyes. Things got so bad at one point, she couldn't even lift a pen to write down her lyrics. And on one occasion, she almost got into a car accident because she couldn't press her foot on the brake. As she focused on her health, she took a break from her solo career. She explained to ID that she focused on writing and producing for other artists instead. She made her return to the spotlight in 2015 when she was asked to join Katy Perry at the Super Bowl halftime show. Missy was terrified. She wasn't sure if people would even remember who she was. The stress of performing in front of so many people eventually led to an anxiety attack, a disorder she has been suffering from since childhood. Missy ended up getting hospitalized the night before the Super Bowl. Thankfully, she was able to gather up the strength to put on a flawless performance. Her performance was nostalgic for old school music lovers, and it introduced a younger generation to some of Missy's most popular songs. She was right back where she deserved to be, in the limelight. In 2019, she was back in the spotlight when MTV honored the Virginia native with the Video Vanguard Award. 
she also performed a medley of some of her hottest songs. Despite her brief disappearance from the industry and her personal setbacks, Missy is now back and better than ever. She released a five-song EP entitled Iconology in 2019. Based on the hit song Throw It Back, it's clear she's still a force to be reckoned with. As we look back at the life of a little girl who was laughed at when she said she wanted to become a superstar, Missy has proven all the haters wrong. She's the first female hip-hop artist to be inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame, has written countless songs for herself and other artists, and has sold over 7 million albums worldwide. Missy's legacy as an innovator, a fighter, and music pioneer is undeniable. Let us know if you're surprised by Missy Elliott's life story. And thanks for watching Real Reality Gossip.